Okay, let's call this meeting to order. Dee, call the order, call the roll, please. Mr. Baum. Here. John Saunders. Here. Doug Bruce. Here. Sam DeSaller. Lee Sanwise. Let me just put those on. Susan Dyer. Bernard Cross. Here. Jeff Golden. Here. Duncan Campbell. Eric Ritchie. Jenny Southern. Matt Seddon. Hang on. Eric. Okay, let's move on. Uh, so you just have a, a minute in your packet. I need a motion for approval. I approve the minutes from May 13th, 2021. Second. Mr. Baum? Yes. Lost it, John Saunders. Yes. Ed Bruce. Yes. Bernard Cross. Yes. Jeff Golden. Yes. Motion carries five yes, zero no, zero abstain. Okay, so let's move on to COA 21-22, 642 North Madison Street. Okay, so this is 642 North Madison Street, uh, COA 21-22. Petitioner is the city of Bloomington. This is the mill building, if you all are familiar. Uh, the rating is notable, uh, industrial structure circa 1910. Uh, background is that it's in the Showers Furniture Local Historic District. The request from the city of Bloomington is to install a radon mitigation system that will exit through the roof. Um, the guidelines that are most relevant for uh, this type of work um, are on page 16 of the guidelines and uh, location of mechanics or electric equipment, stair, elevator, head houses, satellite dishes, antennas, other communications devices should be integrated into the design of the new addition so as to minimize the visibility of the utilities. Uh, rooftop additions may be considered if the underlying roof is not character defining feature and then all rooftop additions, including rooftop equipment utilities, will be carefully reviewed case by case basis for their appropriateness, uh, location, and visibility. Uh, the massing materials and details will be reviewed for their appropriateness and impact to the character defining features uh, of thematic showers buildings. Uh, we do have a approved uh, recommendation uh, with the comment of uh, setting the system back as to minimize visibility from an existing or proposed street or way that's open to the public. Um, I, do, I don't know if, if uh, the city of Bloomington is represented uh, by utilities here from what I understand in, in uh, talking uh, with utilities, uh, the, the radon mitigation system is, is almost entirely internal. Um, and there will be like small piping that will come out of the, the roof uh, to be sure that the uh, radon is, is exited you know, properly. It's obviously a health safety issue. Uh, Brent, this is Larry Allen uh, representing the Redevelopment Commission here. And I can assure you, uh, so I uh, confirmed that it will not be visible by anybody from the ground or from the street side. These are two small PVC pipes that'll just barely stick above the roof. Um, at the kind of, you can see on the, the picture that you have, uh, in the packet, there's like there's a little bit of a flat area between the sawtooth, so there will just be two uh, uh, PVC pipes that stick up there, but they will not be visible from the ground. Great, thank you. Okay, Commissioner, questions, John. Uh, I don't have any questions, Jeff. Bernard, no. Chris, Chris, you're muted. Will they be black or white? We haven't specified. Uh, I think as of right now, they would just be white, uh, plain PVC. We usually spray paint them black just to make them blend and disappear. It's 
Just a rec a suggestion. Okay, that's great. Doug, any questions? No questions. Any questions from the public? Okay, Commissioner, comments. John? No comments. Bernard? None. Chris? What's left of it? Won't you have some of the time? Chris? Yeah, I see a vent pipe and I want it painted black. <laughs> <laughs> Doug? No. I also don't have any comments. I'm enter entertaining a motion. I make the motion to approve uh, 2122 with the provision that they paint the pipes black uh, as it protrudes through the roof. Second. Pete? Baum? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Doug Bruce? Yes. Bernard Cross? Yes. Jeff Golden? Yes. Motion carries. Five, yes, zero, no, zero, abstain. Great. So, John, did we get clarification on zoning for the next COA? I have not yet, Jeff. Um, I've, I've sent a note to planning and zoning and check title 20, um, and I need to get verification there on uh, whether these signs are permissible under, under city code. Uh, I think there is some question that they're not, though, from what I, I had a surface level conversation with a planner uh, this afternoon, and uh, that's all I know right now. I'll just read from it. So COA 21-23, if y'all are familiar, this is 316 North Washington Street. Uh, the, the, the company has already put uh, banana signage on this, on this structure, and uh, I've got Director Zodi went out and took a um, a few more pictures. If I can pull them up here, um, and so you can see, you know, uh, I think that's the north facing side, right, John? That's the long part here. Uh, so there's two bananas. That's correct. The, yeah. the long side is the north side, though. Uh, short side is the west there, Eighth and Washington. Um, so do we have a representative from, right, there's a better one. So yeah, 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 sorry. Do we have a representative from uh, Granite. Granite Property Management with us? Well, then if we don't, let's continue this one. Okay, so background, North Washington Street, Historic District, um, installation of wall signage to the building is the request. There, uh, there. So the historic district that the, I'm sorry to interrupt, but doesn't the petitioner have to be here for us to consider the COA? This is a, a, a question for legal. I believe they do under the rules. That's my fault, Jeff. Um, so let's uh, put that aside for now. I move that we continue this to our next session. I don't think we can do anything uh, with it. I do want to note there is that 30 day window um, that we need to act on this. So I just want to make sure that we're in line with that. How can we act if the petitioner has to be here? Well, I guess you can continue it because they're not present. They're not in compliance with the rules. So I suppose you can just continue it. Does that put us beyond 30 day rule? Uh, I'm not aware of the date that this was submitted, Brett. Do you know? Uh, when this was submitted, Oh, I'd have to get on that. I have to, actually, yeah, I do. Um, well, it should be in the COA, right? It was filed May 7th. Okay, filed. not a date filed on here. Wrong one, sir. I, I guess I wouldn't have uh, when this was submitted because it's it's not been filled out at the top, so. And this one's a retro. This one's already been done, right? Yeah, they, they went ahead and did it, and they're they're sort of uh, asking for. And and we also have issues with the Title Twenty. This may be in violation of the UDO. Yeah, yeah I, I just talked to someone in planning, and um, we probably want to see if they filed for a permit in the first place here, um, since the signs are already up. So I think there's this may not even this may not even be appropriately in front of the board at this point. Um, I'd just say let's continue it and. Uh, 
Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to COA 21-25. Do you, is there is there a motion necessary to continue? Uh, I made a motion to continue this uh, this particular COA. Okay. All right. Let's have a second then. Any seconds? Second. second. Okay. Thank you. Chris Durbaum. Yes. John Saunders. Yes. Doug Bruce. Yes. Bernard Cross. Yes. Jeff Golden. Yes. Motion carries five yes, zero no. Okay, so COA 21 24, the, they have uh, decided to wait till our next meeting. So let's move on to COA 21 25. Okay, COA 21-25, 320 South Davison Street, petitioner Austin Meyer, uh, the, it's rated contributing. It's a carpenter, builder, pyramidal cottage style, circa 1900. It's in the great, Greater Prospect Hill Historic District. The request is to replace the roof and the original windows on the house. Uh, guidelines, most relevant, page 25. Replacement of windows and doors determined to be original should duplicate the original in size and scale in ways that do not visually impact the public way to of the house and continue to reflect the period of the house and uh, prioritize the retention of the roof's original shape as viewed from the public way to sob. Uh, we have staff review uh, recommends approve uh, condition upon the petitioner, sorry, typo their petitioner providing specific details relating to the size and scale of the new windows and fidelity to the period of the home uh, and then windows and roofs should reasonably reflect the original period of the house. Great, so we have the petitioner here. Austin, do you have anything to add? Hi, uh, yeah, we, we like the size of the windows and all that. We'd like to retain that. So I feel like we do stick to those uh, tier guidelines very well for that. I did have a question concerning um, if we were to add, like, could I add shutters or decorative like trim around the windows if it does not uh, have those qualities as of now? It would have to be a part of the COA. So you'd have to file a new COA. Oh, would I? Okay, gotcha. I wasn't sure if that was uh, appropriate with this or not. Yeah, um, beyond that, um, yeah, that everything has been uh, stated. Uh, as you just read. Okay. Um, Commissioner, questions? John? Uh, Jeff, has this been brought to the Neighborhood Association? I don't believe it has. Okay. And my other question is about the windows. Um, he's requesting vinyl. Um, and are those just straight double hangs right now, or are they divided lights? I've actually been in the house. Um, they're uh, double hung uh, and they're two over twos. Almost all the windows are two over twos. Thank you, Jeff. Bernard, any questions? No questions. Chris? When you say two over two, do you mean it's vertically divided? Yes. That is an old style. Um, have they proposed what type of window? Because the internal grid is often, you know, has a negative reflection on the historic property. That, and I would not. I would like to know what windows they are actually proposing and showing what they're, what they're doing. Um, from what I have found, this is Austin. Um, we could use some vinyl windows that do show and are appropriate to um, continue to reflect the period of the house. Uh, however, um, based on the window frames as they exist now, most of, most of them have uh, cracked glass, uh, which would need to be replaced. And talking to 
uh, some other contractors such as City Glass, I have found that they could replace the panes um, in which we could uh, sand off and remove the existing uh, peeling and crusty white paint from the wood on the window or on the wood frames. Um, prime and paint that and then have the glass replaced. So you're talking about redoing the windows, the existing windows? Yeah, we would restore them. Um, just, yeah, we weren't sure on the, the whole process of going about all this. So we filed the COA and I was in contact with Connor very briefly before he, um, before he left. So uh, I didn't get all the information from him that may have impacted this for the COA. So I apologize for that. But um, so yeah. Plan, we, to be clear, your plan now is to, to redo the existing windows. Uh, if possible, we'd like to do that. Um, that would be some awesome. Of them, some of them uh, have deteriorated away a little bit more so that we would have to fully replace. However, for the two windows uh, that are reflected onto uh, the, the public space or the street, uh, those two are in good, uh, sufficient condition that just the window, uh, the glass itself could be replaced. And use, an, and use a storm window, right? Uh, yeah, they do have storm windows on them uh, currently. Right. Well, I'm a little confused, I guess, by the proposal then. I, and that's much more in, in line with preservation attitudes to, to keep the older windows. And they sound, they sound quite old. But you'd yeah, keep right. the ones facing the public way, that's what you're com kind of committing to at the moment? Yeah, originally we were hoping to replace all the windows, um, but after uh, looking at them a bit more, we saw that we could just replace, yeah, that the window panes of the glass in those front ones. Um, based on that, if, are the other windows okay to switch out as long as they still represent um, mostly like the historic uh, visual effects, or is that only for um, the facade, the facade? Um, sorry, is it only necessary for the windows that are facing the street to be historically correct, or am I misunderstanding that? Well, you have every right to to request replacement of all windows, and we would we would talk about that and maybe continue and have the neighborhood group look at it, I suppose. But you know, it's it's much better for your house to hold on to the original ones that that you'll see facing the street. Um, Jeff, maybe you might want to comment on where we are there. Is this not quite ready? It's it's a little vague. Yeah, I mean, if we move forward, we're going to have to make a motion that addresses all these issues. And if you read the guidelines, it really just addresses the the uh, street facade. Um, you know, you could argue that the side, uh, especially the front windows, also are visible from the street. Um, so, I mean, what I would recommend is, and, and like I said, I was just in this house, um, that we consider, uh, that the property owner consider re retaining as many windows as possible. You know, I, I, in my experience, the house was that there was one or two windows that were in pretty uh, bad repair. Um, and uh, maybe we make a motion uh, yeah, I'm not sure how to move on, move forward. Maybe continue and with some more, I, I, one of the problems I'm having with this is we don't know what they're gonna put in. I'll, I'll, you know, what, they, what they have told us is that um, they're gonna put vinyl windows in. We, we haven't seen a picture of vinyl window. Um, and, and, and most of the time we ask that, that those details be presented. 
maybe a resubmittal and with an you know advisory recommendation that those large windows, which are primarily view, viewed from the front, be retained. And certainly all the back ones and the small ones could be changed. And but it, but it's up to the petitioner to ask for what they want. And we appreciate the attitude of keeping some of those windows active and, and historic. So maybe we could move to continue this to the next meeting and staff could work with the petitioner. Or, or we can deny part of it. We can deny the windows and have them come back with the windows and uh, approve the, uh, the roof. That's a good idea. And I, I do want to say I apologize that I didn't know that I needed to have um, evidence of like the new windows of what we were planning yeah. to put in. So. Unfortunately, you're in the in the middle of a, a change. Replacement of the roof in kind is not reviewable and not, and not right. necessary. Exactly. If, so if, he, if he's changing to a metal roof, that would be a, a different application. But something we would have to consider, I think. Uh, it, it is not a metal roof. We'll be uh, replacing with the asphalt single. Or shingle. You're, not, you're not changing the roof line in any way, right? Uh, no, we are not. That's an in kind repair, so it doesn't require the COA. Okay, good. Thank you. So, um, I'm entertaining a motion to continue or to deny or some something in between. Yes, if I can just jump in, if you're going to continue yeah. it, I would want the uh, the petitioner's uh, consent to the continuance. Otherwise, if you do it, yeah. Of course. So Austin, are you willing to continue to the next meeting? Um, if possible, could it be agreed upon for us to uh, retain the uh the current windows that facing like the public space like you had said um to re to replace the glass uh the window itself will have to be pulled out entirely um for a short time during that process i could take out the two that were uh, very very much uh, disrepair and maybe kind of move those to the back side of the house uh, that are not visible to the street line and thus replace uh, the ones that can be seen uh, from the street with the ones that um, are in more functional state. And then we would just uh, repair them as necessary. Anybody want to take a stab at that motion? We, we meet in two weeks, maybe a resubmittal would be better. I'm I'm kind of with Chris. I, I okay. So let's deny. Okay. I'll move to deny with the understanding that the petitioner will resubmit a more specific window application. Okay. I don't know. We need a second. Second. Okay. Ms. Sturbaum? Yes. First. You broke up. What did you say? Don Saunders? Yes. Doug Bruce? Yes. Bernard Cross? Yes. Jeff Golden? Yes. Motion carries. Five yes. So yeah. our just Quick question added. then. Yeah. Who do I need to be in contact with to get them the uh, recommended information then? Uh, Austin, you can go through me. Um, and I believe you should have my email uh, since everything went out uh, for the Zoom link and everything. So um, is that, do you have that? Or you can call the hand office and just ask for me. But, uh, okay, yeah, it's, it's just brent.pierce at bloomington.indiana.gov, correct? Yeah, bloomington.in.gov. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll, I'll be in contact with you about that then. Okay, that'll work fine. Great. All right, thank you. 
Okay, let's move on to COA 21-26. Okay, this is at 512 West Allen Street. Uh, rating is Paul Ash and Elizabeth Cox Ash. Uh, rating is notable. Uh, arts and Crafts, California Bungalow Style, circa 1931. Uh, property is in the McDowell Local Historic District. And the request is restoration of an accessory structure uh, or garden shed uh, for the district design guidelines for McDowell. Uh, it's preferable that outbuildings should be placed to the rear of the house where there is little visual access and, no, and there are no material restrictions for accessory structures within these guidelines. So uh, the staff recommendation is to approve this COA uh, with the comment of the out, the outbuilding is and the garden shed is in the rear of the house and petitioner has shared materials to be used in the restoration. So this, the picture to the right is what it looks like. Uh, <laughs> and and it, uh, it's going to be uh, restored. I can let, I believe the petitioners are here. Yes. <laughs> You have anything to add? <laughs> Thanks for your patience. Anything to add? Let me know when I can speak. Right now. Okay. We bought this property in 1991, and initially we wanted to tear it down because essentially the shed, the shed because it was built in around 1960 or 61 as a carport and then enclosed with whatever scrap, free scrap around. And it looks <laughs> horrendous. It's too small for a vehicle, but it's perfect for a snowblower and for garden equipment. And that's what we've used it for since 1991. When we were first inquiring about tearing it down, planning told us that we had to pave our driveway. And as in older historic districts, our uh, sewer line from the street goes up our driveway for our house and the house next door. We've had the sewer line worked on three times since we've owned the house. So if we would have had it paved, they would have had to dig into it and then we'd have to repave it three times. So when we became a historic conservation district, I think hand or not hand uh, planning dropped that waiver or that uh, indication saying we had to pave the drive, but we didn't do anything since. Last Christmas or last December with the snows, there's been some rot and the carriage doors are now detaching themselves from the original posts. And since we had our contractor out to look at it, two of the posts will need to be replaced anyway. So initially we were looking at replacing like we did in 1991, but the new restrictions with planning state it has to be so many feet away from the uh, alley and so many feet away from the side, and we will lose our entire backyard for this structure. So then we talked to our contractor again and decided, well, let's renovate what there is and do it again. So this is what we have submitted. And I have submitted what carriage doors, there would be carriage doors to replace the crap doors that are there. And these would be from Lowe's and I included that printout on that. And we're looking at something without any windows. I know the picture shows windows. We don't want windows. This is a garden shed. We have a homeless camp within a block from our house. We don't want anyone looking in and trying to steal from us. The siding would be either vinyl or um, metal, although I sent the packet showing vinyl because I couldn't at Lowe's get a, some sort of printout of what a metal siding would be. I would prefer metal. Isn't that wonderful? A picture is worth a million words. But at any rate, it would all be under roof and no windows and it would just replace, it'd be the same size as the original and um, the roof pitch would remain the same. 
And yes, it has, that's our current uh, garage door. That has more on it than what I am looking at. I'm looking at a plain garage door or carriage door on this. But something that would look nice with the rest of the house. Um, I don't know if you have any questions on this. Ready, I'm going to get ready to ask the commissioner, so I will ask them. John, do you have any questions? Uh, I don't have any questions, but I do have some comments. Okay, Bernard, any questions? Bernard? No questions. Chris, any questions? Um, Metal siding, vertical, horizontal, what are you thinking about? Horizontal. And if you really need the dimensions, I'm looking at, let me look, double four size. Okay. I'm sorry. This is, this is getting bigger though, I can see that. Yes, it's a little taller because we don't want the door to be cut down from the standard door that has um, been, um, that's at Lowe's. Right. In order to have it in its current size, you'd have to cut it and that would impact the effectiveness of the door sure. that we would be spending quite a bit of money on. And we would be raising it just a shade Okay, thanks. Doug, any questions? Doug, you still with us? Oh, sorry, I was muted. Uh, no questions. Any questions from the public? I don't have any questions. Commissioner comments, John? Yeah, I'm wondering if the petitioner has considered using uh, cement siding instead of metal or vinyl. And uh, I was also wondering if they would consider putting in faux windows. Can I answer? Yes. No on the windows and no on the cement siding. The historic district allows vinyl and metal and the metal would be more secure for rodents trying to break in versus the vinyl. Bernard, any uh, comments? None. Thanks. Chris, any comments? Yeah, I think you were describing a metal that might not look bad being vertical. A lot of those old sheds like the one you have had vertical boards. So I was not sure how the, the horizontal might be odder than, than just the same metal going vertically up and down. I don't care about the siding. It could be upside down, crisscrossed. It doesn't <laughs> matter as long as we get the thing done. And so it is secure. We don't uh, want our things, uh, you know, because the doors are impacted. We don't want our things stolen. We've spent money on these things. Sure. Do I have any questions? Uh, oh. No. Are we questions or comments? Great. My only comment is that this is within the guidelines and that we should approve it. I'm entertaining a motion. Move to approve. Second. B. Ms. Durbaum. Yes. John Saunders. Yes. Doug Bruce. Yes. Bernard Cross. Yes. Jeff Golden. Yes. Motion carries five yes, zero no, zero abstain. Thank you. And thank you for your patience. Thank hey, you. Hey, are you guys going to keep the bird houses? <laughs> the fence. The bird houses are now on the fence. Okay. They're so attractive. Right. I really like them. No right. bad we need to move on, John. So let's go to old business. We don't have any new business. We don't have any demolition delay. So we need to talk about uh, 1326 Pickwick Place. Go ahead, Brent. Mm -hmm. 
Bless you. Thank you. Okay, this has been before the commission. Mm -hmm. before Jeff. Uh, this is so Connor put this staff report together uh, before he left, had, that, not having any background on how you want to run through the staff reports. I, I don't. I can read or. Well, I, I, it was in the packet, and uh, and we reviewed it before, so. Um, I just, I guess I'm going to ha ask if the commissioners have any questions around this. So, John, do you have any questions around this designation? No, I have no questions, and I support uh, the designation. Bernard, do you have any questions? No questions. Chris, any questions? Sorry, no, I don't. Doug, do you have any questions? No questions. Uh, Jeff, this is, oh, I'm sorry, sir, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. So because this um, was publicly noticed as a hearing for a local designation, we need to um, state that this is an, also the public hearing for the local designation. So if you um, can maybe include that before you go to any kind of motions, Jeff, that sure. would be appropriate. Thanks. Sure. So I don't have any questions around this. And before we uh, go to comments, I will... Uh, state that this is the public notice for this uh, recommendation to the city council for uh, historic designation. And I'm gonna move on to commissioner comments. So John, you have any comments? No comments, Jeff. There are any comments? No comments. Chris? Just um, a compliment to the homeowner who was taken by surprise and really had reacted quite well in an email that I saw. Doug, any comments? Uh, only that I support this and um, I agree with Chris. Uh, I will also agree with those two comments. So let's, uh, we need a motion. We need to have an opportunity for a public comment. Oh, public comment, I'm sorry. Any public comment today? Hearing none, let's move on. Um, so I need a motion. Could we have help with the proper motion? Exactly. Uh, I have the I have the language in front of me, <laughs> but um, if it if it's okay, I can read it. Yes, please do. Okay, um, this is a resolution to forward to council. Um, today, the historic preservation declares that the property located at, and we are what, 1326 Pickwick, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. South uh, Pickwick. South Pickwick. South Pickwick. Let me go back up here. Place. Apologies, I'm getting back to my staff report. Brent, can you go back to the numbers uh, for the historic criteria that it meets? Uh, is that in the staff report? Yeah. Yes. Actually, I've got it right here. It's okay. Um, meets the following criteria for local designation referred to in the staff report. Uh, and that is uh, criteria 1A, criteria 2E, and criteria 2G. Uh, consequently, the HPC recommends its historic designation under Title Eight of the Bloomington Municipal Code to the Common Council with the attached map, which is with the packet. Okay, I need a commission member to um, make that motion, just agree to that motion. I'll do it, so moved. Second. Okay, do you need a vote? Chris Sturbaum? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Doug Bruce? Henry Doug. Yes. Bernard Cross. Yes. Jeff Golden. Yes. Motion carries. Five yes, zero no, zero abstain. That is good news. Um, and then you want me to do the interim protection resolution? Yes. Yes. 
Okay. Uh, today, after a vote, the Historic Preservation Commission recommends that the Common Council locally designate the property at 1326 South Pickwick Place as historic and places the property under written protection pending action by the Common Council under Bloomington Municipal Code 8.08.015. So moved. Second. Chris Sturbaum? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Ed Bruce? Yes. Bernard Cross? Yes. Yes. Golden? Yes. Motion carries five yes, zero, nine, zero. Nine. Awesome. And uh, we're, I'm hoping that uh, at least a couple of us can be at the, the city uh, meeting around this when that comes up uh, to support this historic designation. It's an important property. Um, so any commissioner comments tonight? No comment. Hearing none. Uh, any Mr. Well done, well done, Jeff. Getting under the wire. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and and I would just say this is Doug. I'm I'm sorry it took me so long. I had a conference call with a client, and I no matter what I could do, I couldn't get them off. And finally, I said I got to go. <laughs> so I'm I appreciate your patience. I know it was kind of a pain in the butt tonight. Thanks, Doug. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Brent, you did a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank Sex. you very much, Commissioner. Uh, I, we are in the process of reviewing applications, and, and we'll start reaching out here next week to to, new, to candidates for the program manager position. Just an update there. Great. Any, any other commissioner comments? Any uh, comments from the public? Looks like Carol has a hand raised. You got a hand raised. Carol, did you, you have a, Carol, do you have something to add? Yes. Um, I don't know if this comes under your jurisdiction or not, but um, are you aware of the Lower Cascades road closure and uh, that they are wanting to seek uh, historical um, designation for this, this park in its 100th year? Um, I'm concerned that it's going to, with this road closure, it's going to keep people from enjoying the park, those of us who are not as mobile as we once were, um, if we're not allowed to take our cars through, <coughs> excuse me, um, there are accessibility issues involved with this. And um, in a year when they were, we're going to be celebrating the 100th anniversary of this park, and also uh, with its uh, being sought for historic designation, I think it would be a, a terrible shame to restrict um, the use of the park to those who are ambulatory or uh, able to ride a bicycle. Those of us who are not able to do that, the distances that we would have to go to get into the park, um, that's robbing us. And I've been a citizen of Bloomington for 66 years. I've been paying taxes for the last 51 and I pay taxes for this park and I want to enjoy the park. The other thing is that I live in Blue Ridge and we have a terrible time um, getting out of our addition on um, game days and other heavy event days. We've not had that in the last year because of COVID. So this has been a terrible time to run a pilot uh, for this park because you can't get an honest assessment of what's going on. But we use that road to get out of our addition on heavy traffic days. And if that road is closed permanently, I don't know what we're gonna do to get out. We can't get out done. We can't get out North Walnut heading south. We have to go down to the light and turn into the park and drive through the park, come under the bypass and come out up by the steak and shake. Um, again, with I don't know if, if you all have anything to do with the historical um, designation for this park, but um, we need to be able to enjoy it, all of us, not just bicyclists and pedestrians. I appreciate your comments and I'm not, I was not aware of this situation and we'll uh, look into it. Can yes, anyone sir. catch us up on the attempt to locally designate the park? I, I know nothing I can, about that. I can provide a little bit of information about that. This, um, and it may be a national register, uh, a national parks register designation. It's part of 
um, the Parks and Recreation Department's um, work, not so much on the related to the, the pilot project with the road, um, but more in uh, regard to some um, remediation work that's being done on the creek uh, that goes through there. Um, it's, uh, it's part of the, that process that goes through there. Wouldn't that complicate the road closure? Uh, I, I don't know. I can't really answer that. I just, that's the background that I'm aware of. There's going to be a decision made on June 22nd, a recommendation from the Parks Department to the um, Public Works Department at their two meetings. And the, the pilot began last March and was supposed to go through September and because of COVID was extended to June 30th of this year. So it will become permanently closed or open back up as of June 30th, but the decision will be made on the 22nd. Doesn't sound like that's something that we um, have to say over, but um, I'm gonna have staff look into that. Thank you, I appreciate uh, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to look into it. I vaguely remember Connor saying something about there are elements of Works Progress Administration um, attributes out that cascade. So I'm imagining this is part of a national register effort, but I, I don't, I'm not aware of hand having any sort of uh, right. work and related to it or the HPC having any approval. Right, the HPC only deals with local designations and this, uh, this will be a national designation. I'm amazed at how many people in Bloomington are not aware that this road is even currently closed. And when I tell them about it, they're very upset about it. But it's amazing. I mean, every day I'm talking to people about it and they are not even aware this has happened. And I think that's just, that's criminal. <laughs> Thanks for your input. Thank you so much. Thanks for your patience Thank, as well. Thank you. Any announcements tonight? We are adjourned. Right on the money. Good night. Good night. Right Thanks on. All. Thank you.